a snowy day here at Peppermill, Reno. Coming to you as the month of January 2021 winds down a month that resulted in me starting out with four $1,000 losses in my first six sessions. Good news is I somehow managed to book six consecutive wins coming into today to put me dead even for the month. So question needs to be asked, can I successfully get into the black for the first month of 2021? Let's jump into this single $5 blind no limit hold'em game and find out. So after last week's stint over at the Atlantis, we are back in the familiar confines of single blind $5 no limit hold'em at Peppermill. And it starts off when we get a limp and I have pocket fives in the cutoff and over limp. The button over limps as well. So with 20 in, it comes ace five, six with two spades giving me bottom set. Check to me and I bet three quarters pot on a draw heavy board. The button calls and everyone else folds. So with 50 in, the turn is the king of spades. I bet 25 and the button calls. I'm looking for the board to pair on the river, but I'd settle for a brick if I can get one, which I pretty much do. It comes the eight of hearts. I bet 40 and the button and OMC raises me to 100. I've played with this guy on and off for a decade now. I know he's always gonna have it here. So I show my hand to try to get some sort of reaction and I lay it down and he shows the nut flush. Next hand under the gun opens to 15 and plus two calls and I have eights in the low jack and I call. The big blind calls as well so with 60 in it comes queen seven eight with two spades. Our second set in as many hands. It gets checked to me and I bet 30 and only the big blind calls. So with 120 in the turn is the nine of clubs bringing in backdoor clubs and he checks. I'm definitely still going to bet a set here. I make it 60 and he check calls. So with 240 in, the river is an offsuit six. Terrible card for me as he starts thinking about a bet. Finally, he decides on a sizing of 50 bucks. So it's going to cost me 50 to win 290 here on a board with no flush possibilities. My opponent is wearing one of those wrap around masks and a hat. I have absolutely no idea who this human being is or if I've ever played with him before. One of the frustrating things about pandemic poker. But I end up tossing in the chips anyway. So we have a $340 pot, and he shows five six of clubs for a turned straight. I'm definitely glad that he chose the trapping route, as it ended up saving me a lot of money. So we're 0 for 2 on sets, and two hours in, I still hadn't won a pot of more than $10 as I looked down at the Octo Crab for the fifth time. Not sure why I mentioned it, but what the hell. Under the gun limps in the next hand, and plus one calls. I have seven eight of spades, plus two, and I decide to press it. I make it 30. The cutoff, a super OMC, cold calls me, and the other fold, so at 70 in, it comes five six deuce, and my continuation bet takes it down. So much like a chip shot field goal when you've given up three touchdowns, I'm kind of on the scoreboard. Card dead for the next hour and a half or so. So they were going to have to pry the 8-5 of hearts out of my cold dead hands at that point. I make it 15 plus three in the low jack calls. Then an OMC on the button raises to 40 and we both call. So with 125 in, it comes six of hearts, nine of hearts, six of spades. Knowing he's capable of three betting hands like ace queen here, it seemed like a good spot of me to lead out, which results in two folds and the biggest pot I've won in four hours of play. Next hand folds to me in the cutoff with pocket eights and I raise to 20. The button calls and the big blind calls, so it's 60 in, it comes 679 with two spades. I bet 30 here with my open ended straight draw and the pair of eights. Older lady on the button calls. So with 120 in, the turn is an offsuit eight, giving me a set, but bringing in a one-liner. I bet 40, and she calls. So with 200 in, the river is an absolute disaster. It's a 10, putting a straight on the board. I check, and she bets 30 into 200. So I'm left now in the same shitty situation as before, getting an amazing price on a call, but this time 
I can only chop. I decided to toss in the chips anyway. And we have a $260 pot, and she shows Jack 7 of clubs for the win. So if you're scoring at home, we are now 0 for 3 on sets on the day. All right, we will see if me having a full-time job really bites me in the ass today. And I say that because I'm prepared to jump back into the game right now. And if I didn't have work the next five days, I definitely would have quit today, given how bad I'm running, knowing I could jump back in tomorrow. But it's the only day I have to play, and I have the rest of the day available. So we'll see. Will it help me? Or will having a full-time job bite me in the ass? Let's find out. Then I didn't get video of it, but I played a hand that I shouldn't have played and got punished for it. My King Seven of Hearts took on Jack Nine of Hearts on King Three Five with two hearts. It was against that same lady, and despite having a 97.6% chance to win on the flop, I lost a $400 pot when she went runner, runner, two pair on me. Then we get a $20 open from a pro in early position and a call from plus two. I'm on the button with aces. After seven hours of play, it's the first time I've had a pocket pair above eights, and I raise to 75. The pro calls, and the other guy, an unknown young guy who bought in deep, and I don't know if I've played with before, makes the call as well. So with 230 in, the flop is Jack 8-6 Rainbow. The pro checks, and this young guy, Donk leads for 150. There's obviously no way I can fold here, and raising doesn't seem that smart either against an opponent who I think knows what he's doing. So I decide to make the call, and the pro folds. So with 530 in, the turn is the Jack of Hearts, bringing in backdoor hearts. He bets out again here, as I obviously thought he might. He makes it 275. The Jack's a bad card for my range, as the preflop 3 better. It's way better for him as the field caller here. But that said, I opt to make the call anyway. So with $1,080 in, the river is the king of hearts, bringing in backdoor hearts. And he puts me all in for my last 500. Now the minute he donk led that flop, I just felt like I might end up with a tough river decision like this, and sure enough, I do. Him having 9-7 of hearts here certainly felt like a good possibility. Seemed like the kind of hand he would lead out with. But I also feel that if he did flop a set, that this was a pretty damn good way to play it. And in all honesty, the play I would play it a decent amount of the time. I did wonder if he'd check raise. I think most people would try to go for the check raise with the set. So I was torn. And obviously at this point, I can only beat a bluff. And in 2021 live poker, you don't see too many guys with a kamikaze three street bluff against a pretty strong range like I had in that spot. So I decided to let it go my apologies for an anticlimactic hand, but sometimes that just is what it is. I won back $75 right after that with pocket queens in the next hand. And then I stopped filming. And as fate might have it, that's when I got hot. I picked up kings and got a king high flop. I ended up being against the case king of this lady I was mentioning before, and that resulted in me getting all of her money in an $800 pot. So, it was a day that went horrifically wrong throughout the vast majority of it, but we emerge without a huge loss. All right, booking a $379 loss, and it's not too often where a loss like that feels like a win but it kind of does. That hand that I didn't get video of with the aces, or rather with the set of kings, was obviously critical. And then I picked up pocket aces against pocket kings of a local named Bob who knows me well. And somehow Bob was smart enough to only lose $160 to me in the hand. He basically just called me all the way down on a queen high board and, and just called my $20 race preflop. So I don't know how that happened, but it worked out okay for him. Um, and uh, I end up escaping what could, have been a, what could have been a disastrous day. My decision to stay, as I mentioned earlier, ended up, I guess, working out. Usually it doesn't in those spots, but I'll take it. 
it definitely was kind of aggravating earlier. And I've been dealing with this a lot in the year 2021, and that is the very small riverbed. You know, the one sixth, one seventh pot size riverbed where I just can't get away from it. It's the whole like irresistible pot odds thing. But I'm definitely a loser lifetime when paying off those kind of river bets. And I was thinking about it in terms of why people make those bets. And I really do think it's a case where they obviously have realized how hard it is to make draws. And then they've realized how much it hurts when you make your draw and get a fold on the river. So the solution is just to bet really small. So I don't know about you guys, but I am seeing a lot of that lately. And I'm trying to get better at not paying those bets off, but I guess there are some spots where when you're getting six or seven to one, you just kind of have to. So anyway, that'll uh, wrap things up for this vlog on a uh, cold, snowy, Reno evening. Thank you guys for subscribing. If you haven't already, I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.